Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show how you can alter the size, the exact aim, and the position and angle of approach of your snooted beam to really create some compelling underwater images. Let's check it out. Here's a yellow ray. A snoot is very useful on muck dives, where subjects often have lousy backgrounds. The snooted beam can be used to make creative images. Make your buoyancy negative and approach slowly. On muck dives, you can carefully settle on the seafloor with no damage to life or, the, or a reef. Detach the strobe snoot and hold it with the left hand and rest your elbow arm on the seafloor <clears throat> and decide on what you want to illuminate, the size of your beam, in other words, how much you want to illuminate of the subject, and from what angle you want to illuminate the subject. Aim and focus the camera, depress the shutter with the right hand, and at the same time, aim and hold the snoot with the left hand. Then review your LCD and make any necessary adjustments. Now this is a little tricky, but it can be done with practice. Let's start with this example of a jawfish at the Blue Heron Bridge. My snooted beam on this jawfish was too large, and my strobe was positioned above and in front of the subject, such that the image shows backscatter, backscatter and a distracting background. Now, I lowered my snoot and strobe beam to the seafloor and held it at an oblique angle to the jawfish to minimize backscatter and the background. And now, the jawfish is bold and vivid. The tiny amount of backscatter was easily removed in post-processing. -proce it's a much better image. Batfish are always fun to photograph at the Blue Heron Bridge. I love their expression and the way they seem to walk on the seafloor using their modified pectoral fins. I like this portrait taken with a conventional strobe, but I don't like the pesky background, even though I opened up my aperture to blur it as much as possible. Using a large, carefully aimed snooted beam, now the portrait image of this batfish really pops. Now here's a profile batfish image taken with my conventional strobe setup. And again, the snooted profile image is more appealing, though I did illuminate part of the seafloor, seen at the lower right. Now visibility was terrible on this dive. I spotted this blenny under a ledge with a bad background and nothing else to photograph. So I tried experimenting with my snooted beam. I was patient and used a small snooted beam aimed from the seafloor and from an oblique angle on the left. And I was lucky and got this image of the blenny yawning as it faced me. I actually really like this image and the blenny really stands out. This image of a striped burfish was taken with a conventional strobe setup. It's okay. Again, I don't like the background. Now the, blur, the burfish started to swim and I could not get in front of it to get a portrait with my snooted beam. However, I did slowly swim above it and use my snoot to illuminate a small part of the burfish. I actually like the perspective and the emphasis on the striking corneal iridescence in this image. Now this subject is okay with no snoot, but with a snoot from a low angle, I'm avoiding the background and the subject really is more striking in my opinion. This was a fairly large flounder, but in terrible visibility, bad backscatter, sandy, boring background, I used my snoot and only the eye and muff uh, were illuminated, and I like this image. I then flipped down my plus 10 wet diopter for a super macro shot of the eye, and the intense, narrowly snooted light beam enhances the detail, texture, and even color of the ocular structures, while at the same time minimizing a busy, distracting background. We found a beautiful pipe blenny emerging from a hole, took a snooted shot, I checked my LCD and noted that while I focused my camera on the subject, my snooted beam missed the part of the subject and also the light was too dim. I increased the strobe power and moved the strobe closer to the subject. <clears throat> now my illumination was brighter and covered the entire subject, but I did not exploit the advantage of the snoot. We can still see the sandy seafloor and the marked backscatter. I adjusted the mask insert in the snoot to a smaller diameter and aperture and aimed from a lower position. Now I have a much better image. This pike bunny really stands out. This small moray eel under a ledge was taken with my usual single strobe setup. It's okay. This snooted image highlights the upper jaw and face, face with now a black background. It's better. Still not great. The eel moved to face me and I used my snooted beam from the left side of the subject from the, my left side to illuminate a portion of the right side of the eel. And I really like this image. 
Again, I flipped down my plus 10 wet diopter and I got this shot of its eye with a nice contrasting black background. Now this next series shows how you can really get creative with a snoop. This large and very cooperative scorpion fish did not swim away after I approached it very closely. I was lucky here because I could rest both my camera and my left arm with the detached snooted strobe on the seafloor for stability. Here's a snooted shot of its eye. The texture and detail is emphasized. Here I caught the front part of its eye from an oblique angle to highlight the corneal iridescence. I aimed my snoot behind the scorpion fish's eye from the top of its head from above and increased my ISO but aimed and focused my camera on the eye itself to get a retro illuminated image of the eye, which I think is pretty cool. It's different. Here's the last shot. I accidentally aimed my strobe behind the blenny's face. I got more of its body by mistake and I almost hit the delete button, but then I decided, wow, this is kind of different, and now I actually like it. I don't know if uh, other people will like it or not, but anyway. I hope this video gives you an idea of how you can vary your snoot beam aim, size, and angle of approach to really create unique and compelling images. Thank you.